Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to 20 Sides to Every Story. Um, we are a group of gamers uh, playing lots of uh, various games. Uh, TTRPGs tend to be our wheelhouse, but uh, not just what we do. Um, uh, thank you right off the bat, uh, Cliff, for the cheers, and Dave as well. We appreciate them. Uh, so it's Thursday night, which means it's time for Out of the Abyss. Uh, and our, our characters uh, just um, got to maybe the last step before escaping uh, the Underdark. They got to the deep gnome village of uh, Lingdenstone. That's where we left off uh, last, last week. So I'll let them introduce themselves in a minute. Um, 20 Sides to Every Story is a great gaming community, a uh, very active uh, group of gamers. Like I said, we mostly do TTRPGs, but we also get into console gaming, PC gaming, uh, pretty much the, the run of the mill or, or, or the, everywhere um, uh, we get into. Uh, and normally, even if you have not tried something, there is someone on the Discord who has and can help you out. Uh, so I encourage you to, uh, if you haven't, take a look at our Discord. Um, I, I also encourage you, if you've been uh, watching with us a few weeks in a row, or you like what you see, to join our Patreon. Whoa, for the jams, Patreon uh, get a variety of benefits, um, and uh, that's uh, a great way to support the channel. Um, a little bit of a change. Uh, we are now um, host. Uh, normally, what we do is we have. Um, at least one community campaign going on at a time. Those are, unlike, unlike this game, which is longer campaign form, those are drop in, drop out games. And those allow uh, players to, um, to play for a session, a few sessions, and then sort of fade in the background as your schedule allows. Uh, and so we are starting to advertise those on, do we have a link for this now? Uh, do, we, do, we, it, we don't uh, oh, on the disc on the Twitch channel right. here, but if you come into our Discord server, uh, certainly you'll be able to see the signups as they they come out. Great, uh, and it's a great way to get involved with the community. Um, we love having new players. Uh, we love uh, having new a variety of playing styles, and so uh, you really uh, new people really strengthen our community. So we encourage you to uh, stop by. Um, with that, I will say that we are going to, um, I'll go around and introduce, or I'll have everyone introduce themselves. So if you could, um, let's see, what I'd like you to do is, um, to introduce your character and then maybe answer, maybe talk about sort of, of, of the, these these players have traveled with a, quite a number of NPCs, um, and it, it, we are getting to a point of sort of inflection in the story. So if you don't mind, um, what of the NPCs you've met so far that your character thinks on? Uh, I'd love to hear that. So uh, I will start with um, uh, Ed. Uh, I'm Ed. I play Jaysa, a uh, halfling rogue. Uh, I think that the uh, NPCs that Jasa thinks about most often are um, Topsy and Turvy, the two uh, deep gnomes that we met uh, very early on and departed from. We've heard some stories that maybe they weren't all that they seem to be, uh, but uh, they were, when we first met them, uh, they seemed quite vulnerable and they extracted a promise from me that I would not take them back to Blingdenstone. Uh, and uh, well, we succeeded in fulfilling that promise though not so intentionally, uh, but uh, their sort of uh, perceived vulnerability at that point has sort of stuck with me. Okay. Uh, uh, I, we are switched on the overlay, Alex, if you didn't notice that. Actually, just don't oh, fix the drizzle. Yeah. Uh, so I will go to Drezzle since he was by the overlay next. So I'm Scott. I'm playing uh, Drazzle, who is a, a lizardfolk cleric. And the thing that uh, the NPC that he most remembers and had the most impact was this one drow guard who let him keep his uh, bowl from soup. 
Um, it was an act of kindness he hadn't really expected from the situation. And it was really a, kind of a beacon for him at the very beginning that things might turn out to be okay, that even in the worst of conditions, there can be a positive. Good. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Ethan. Hi, I'm Ethan, and I play Dolphix, a gnome fighter. Uh, and Dolphix is probably most, I think, the NPC that he's most connected with is probably the, the Duergar um, back in Grackleston. I'm forgetting his name. Ethan is forgetting his name. Um, uh, that we rescued. Jim Jar. Uh, Not Jim Jar. No. no. Not Jim Jar. Um, the one that we rescued from. Um, uh, it's. Um... Give me a second. I have also that you rescued from Slubadope. Yes, that's oh, the one. Oh, Hemeth. 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 Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Hemeth is the one that he's thinking about, just because Hemeth seemed like uh, a guy who who felt like he could do more, but was holding himself back because of his his current station in life. And and uh, Dolphix is just thinking about him and you know the situation that. Hemeth is going to find himself in soon with, with the uncom un oncoming demon lords. So, that's although he is about. he is prepared because he did see it, right? Like he mm -hmm. he knows what his situation is. I think it better, sounds like it, yes, better than most, and uh, he's going to have a hard hard time convincing anyone else to to help out. So. Yep. Uh, last and certainly not least, or last but certainly not least, is uh, Alex. I'm playing uh, Vic Valentine, a half-elf bard, um, and <clears throat> I think the uh, a NPC that he's been thinking a little bit about is uh, Darendel, as Darendel is a Quagoth, but correct me if I got this wrong, but claims to be from um, the surface world, and... Um, it just, you know, the end game for Vic is to kind of make sure that the whole crew kind of gets home safely, but um, is kind of questioning whether that is really a safe option for Darendel in the long term. Um, and is, hasn't really talked to Darendel directly about that, but has been dwelling on that, uh, especially as it seems like we're boiling down to maybe that opportunity to finally be above ground now that we've made our way uh to the place that you know has connections to the surface world um and we haven't really talked about darren dill's background and like other than the surface mostly because he went with that other group right and so uh you didn't have a lot of that backstory but he um he um has told you that uh he is a prince um and he is a gold elf prince polymorph into a Quagoth form, and he has been stuck there. Uh, and uh, he, the person who did that was an evil wizard who trapped him in this form and has exiled him away from his people. Big story. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. So, um, so he, he has a little bit of a, a want of getting home and defeating that evil wizard. Um, you guys mentioned, uh, there are, uh, quite a few other NPCs they came along, uh, some of who have unfortunately passed away, um, some of who have successfully gotten home, they, like Hemeth, and then, uh, they had a Myconoid Sprout named Stool, uh, who they, they, they did their, the, the group did their duty and got these people back to where they are from. So, um, despite... Um, a lot of problems along the way, including what seems to be now two demon lords maybe fighting over control of the Underdark in a weird sort of way. Um, it's not clear what Demogorgon's goal was, but it seemed like um, Zuckerboy, the Lady of Fungus, seems to have some pretty grandiose ideas about how she's going to take control of the Underdark by basically marrying the uh, Forgotten Realm's largest organism, uh, Aramycos, or so the vision sort of led you to believe. Um, and so uh, 
most of the Underdark is very, very unaware of this, but uh, you have all done your best to educate those and to warn those that you've, you've come across and some have experienced that with you. Um, so uh, I think where we'll start is um, you had successfully negotiated your way into Blingdenstone, a city that um, centuries ago had been completely wiped out by the drought and uh, which only recently, maybe a decade or so ago, was resettled. Um, and in the resettlement, uh, the city was in shambles. And so they've created um, basically a fortress and they're slowly growing the fortress as they try to take back the original city or the, what, what used to be the original city, what remains of it. Um, so on the outside, it's uh, somewhat paranoid and somewhat xenophobic. And on the inside, you actually found it to be quite warm. Like once you got into the inner gates, there was this feeling of, you know, things were all right. And uh, it was a, a unusual feeling. Like it was not something you've really experienced since you woke up in the prison uh, of the drought. So uh, the guards brought you uh, specifically because you talked a little bit outside the gates about the drow following you. The, dra the, the, the guards, the Noma, uh, deep known guards, decided to bring you directly to, and as they're walking you over, they say, um, um, they're, the people they're bringing you to, they are in, like incredibly respectful about. Um, one of the guards will tell you outright, um, and and Dolphix, he may he may actually have this conversation with you in Gnomish, like will outright mention that, um, thinking that you understand deep gnome culture just as a shared bond, whether or not you do that's your, but deep gnomes have a king and a queen normally. Settlements have sort of a joint shared responsibility of royalty, and uh, he points out that this would be the king of the queen except they don't want it. Um, but they are the reason that Blinkton Stone re-exists. Like they are the people who set out the initial scouting missions. Um, they set up uh, the settlement parties that came and slowly built the city to what it is right now, even if it's not, you know, it, it, it would have, the city would have been forgotten if not for these two. Um, and they, they tell you that they just, they, they won't, if you try to call them king and queen, they just won't. They won't allow it. Like they're they're not those sorts of people. So, but you can tell that all the guards respect them to that level. Okay. Um, and so, are we brought right to them from like the gate straight you, to them? You are, and it, it was a little weird because you weren't brought into any sort of throne room, right? Like, um, you were brought into basically like a bureaucrat's heaven, and these two people were sitting at desks that faced each other. And they're just books and, and papers all over. And they both sort of turn to you simultaneously as one of the guards cleared uh, their throat to sort of make their presence known. And they both sort of looked at you in some surprise, the six of you, and I didn't mention to the audience, uh, there's uh, two NPCs still with them. Uh, one is Eldeth and she's from, uh, she's a shield door from Galtabrim. So, one of these dwarven cave systems that's between the surface world and the, uh, the Underdark, and then Darendel, who, who uh, Vic had mentioned. Um, and so looking over you, um, you see um, the, let me maybe describe them real quick for you. Um, give me one second. Wrong chapter. Um, the guards, the guard, uh, next to you, uh, he says in his best broken common, he says, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, may I introduce you to, um, and he points to, there's a, one of the, one of the individuals behind the desk is male, one's female. Uh, and he says, may I introduce you to, uh, Dorbo and Seni. Diggermatic, um, the, the, the leaders of our community. Uh, and he does a, a bow and he actually backs away. Like, I would, I would say this, 
your, your best comparison in terms of urban settings would be to Grecklestow, in which you never felt like you were alone 100% of the time. It, this is very different feeling. This is like an assumption of safety that, and an assumption that visitors will not cause trouble. Um, and uh, you see, um, uh, I would say you probably see Dorbo turn to you and says, uh, what is this? Um, I didn't realize we were having visitors today. And uh, you see the one who's introduced as Seni she um, she sort of like tisks him a little bit, and she's like, "You don't need to put on that face." Um, and she says, "How how may we help you?" Uh, Vic will step forward and uh, give uh, a deep bow uh, in respect and say, um, uh, "The hospitality that you provide us here and this the, the, this welcoming is greater than anything that." We have experienced since we've been here in the Underdark. We've come a long way to to be in your presence. Oh well, it's um, it's meager beginnings of a city that was once grand. So, we uh, we welcome your visit. Uh, oh, many of us are refugees, you might say. Uh, we'd spoken with the guard out front. Uh, we 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 were all captives of the Drow. Uh, until very recently. And Seni, Seni spits, like, just openly when you, hear, you talk about drama. Like, just in, in disgust. I think we share sentiments in this regard. Um, he says, well, I'm... I, it, it is a, quite a feat, uh, Dorbo says, uh, it's quite a feat that you escaped uh, prisoner, prison by the drow. Um, I do hope you have time to tell us the tale. Um, you are welcome here as long as you don't cause trouble. Um, until, until um, really whenever, um, uh, whatever you decide to do next. Well, I, I want to be 100% honest and earnest um, in our being here. Um, we don't actively mean to bring trouble, but as I said, we have freed ourselves from these drow, and they pursue us. And uh, how many? Three, four? What are we? What are we talking about? What what sort of trouble have you we, brought to our doors? I mean, just just it's an inconsequential number. Um, so not an army, sir. No, but uh, really, what we mean to say is that. Um, there's a more pressing issue here in the Underdark, uh, one that we have bear witness to twice over. It appears that um, demon lords from the Abyss have emerged and are wreaking havoc across the Underdark. Uh, we are here to uh, give you word and hope that uh, you will be able to defend yourselves over any what attack may come. Seni, Seni closes the book she's writing in. Like you, you could tell she was sort of multitasking. Like she was competently multitasking. She wasn't ignoring you, but she was just working out numbers and things like that. She closes the book, um, and she she looks at Dorbo and she says, "You have traveled far. Um, why? Why don't we do this?" Uh, um, I will have one of our our um, our staff here bring you to Tappy's, where you can stay. And uh, she says, even even that big guy, I think they have a, a bed big enough. Although we don't normally, you know, um, Lure is fine. Uh, he was talking about Daredevil. She was talking about Daredevil. And uh, awkward. Yeah. <laughs> and so she's. Uh, uh, she says, um, and then perhaps um, might Dorbo and I join you for dinner later this evening and you can tell us more about this. Maybe not so publicly. Um, and the guards, or not the guards, this, there's, no, there's no guards that you can see around. Like, it's just like they left out of this feeling of safety. Um, but the staff are all like, they are poorly multitasking because they're all like, 
like that um, as they listen to the story. And she says, I, I would love to evaluate the information you have just to make sure that we're not causing undue panic here. Um, I trust what you say, but why don't we talk at dinner tonight? Of course, we, we don't mean to, to bring panic. Oh, I, 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 I don't think there was any any malice involved. Let's let's talk about it as a group and, and maybe perhaps we can we can figure out a plan. Um, we do appreciate. How soon is dinner? Soon? You would have to ask Tappy, but we'll be over, um, I don't know, in a, in a few hours. Um, in the meantime, um, you are welcome to um, explore Blinkton Stone. Um, I will warn you, there are areas that we um, have intentionally sealed off um, because we haven't quite tamed those areas yet. Um, so just be careful where you wander. Um, and um, and then Dorbo chimes in. He's like, yeah, you know, um, I, I do have to warn you. Um, I, I, I warn all of the, the Srif Neblin who, who come. Um, just don't panic when you see the ghosts. Oh. Oh, it's... oh. We have a lot of them. And... Some might be angry, but they're not hostile. So just, we, we're not quite sure what to do with them yet, but for now we treat them as, as honored citizens who defended uh, uh, Blinkton Stone in the past. I had Gumpel Grimm on my head. Um, so please, um, just don't be surprised if, you know, one is in your bedroom tonight. Do they well, just or, or and he looks at Sunny and is like, or every night. <laughs> uh, well, we appreciate well, that. From fair warning. From the thing in the underdark, ghosts might be less uh, jarring than they may have been before. Just, just remember that every ghost who is here um, died defending our city from those evil drow. There no uh, drow ghost? No, no. Just just other um, defenders of the city. So we respect them for the sacrifice they gave, even if they scream sometimes. And respect them, we shall. Well, certainly uh, we look forward to uh, talking with you more this evening, but if I could beg of you one more question. Uh, 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 so of course somewhat of an unrelated matter but um are you aware uh, are you aware of anyone that belongs to the society of brilliance here in in your Ooh. city of, yes a crew in, yes uh i don't think there's anyone in, and and um uh they sort of look at each other and they they come and go um i might the the person who would know the best is tappy and um uh, as visitors stay with Tappy. Thank you. Um, but I, I haven't seen anyone from the society around any any of the five. So. Um, and then they, they say, um, well, um, please, uh, if there's anything we can do for you, we, um, Cindy and I might be busy um, but uh, certainly we can find an assistant to help with something um, if it's if it's minor um, and we will we will see you in a few hours um, but until then feel free we look forward to it thank you oh so sort of a, a, a yet very young deep gnome comes up to you and like sort of uh, dis, um, disheveled dress and you can tell he's the like the intern Deep gnome. And he's like, I don't, uh, do you guys want to go see Tappy now? Or do you want to? Is there anything? Uh, what can I help you with? Uh, and can I move you to the map? Well, yeah. I changed your icon. To that veteran to Tappy is our first order of business. Down here. 
So let me um, let me talk a little bit about what Blink did. So in general, I think I did this a little bit at the end last time. Um, so it's interesting. Those of you those of you who are um, small creatures, um, it's a dream, right? Everything is everything is sized to you. Uh, those of you who are medium or higher, there are times you're squeezing, you're ducking, um, and it becomes pretty like the area you're in was all rebuilt, right? Like it, it's, the whole city was ruined. Uh, and so they've slowly rebuilt things. But it's clear that you can see it, still see pieces of what used to be. And it's kind of clear to you that this is somewhat, this was an intentional choice now. Uh, and your best guess is some sort of defensive maneuver is that drow are, are bigger. And so by, by making things every everything small creature size, um, they have a little bit of an advantage in case the drow actually, you know, got them. Um, what else? Uh, so it's um, it really, really is warm. It's actually bright colors. You see um, people hanging their laundry out and it, you know, it's not monochromatic or it's not, you know, shades of, of blacks and purples. It, it's actually quite pretty, and um, you see, you know, kids running around in the streets. Your your best guess, honestly, is this is a much smaller place than Grafelstone was, like in terms of inhabitants, and probably also and, and land size. Um, but it's so maybe maybe a few hundred people are here, based on sort of what you're seeing. So it's 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 pretty small community. Uh, but it's it's you you smell food cooking. Um, they're um, so in the, largely homogenous. Like they're all just they same are, type of people. They are all Sverneblin, a word I cannot say. So <laughs> um, yeah, they are all the deep gnomes. So um, different varieties, right? Like different. Like they they don't look. They're not minions. They don't all look exactly the same. They, they, you know, they look. You see tall ones, short ones. You know, dark skin, lighter skin, all sorts, um, different fashions and stuff like that. Uh, but you, you do drawing a lot more attention since you're so different. You do, but not like uh, you drew attention in Gracklestow too. But this is, they, they just seem more sort of like at ease with strangers. Um, and you guys do know that. Um, this deep gnomes in general do have uh, trade relations with the the uh, above world, so it, it doesn't. It's not that weird. Like the 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 dwergar, not really at all, right? Like they don't they don't go up to the surface, but the deep gnomes do. Um, you get a real feeling similar to the dwergar. You get a real feeling of like um, hard working group. Um, and you also, maybe more than the Dwergar, um, and possibly based on the story you heard from the guard, Dolphix, you get a real sense that these are, they're adventurous. Like they, they came here to reestablish this thing under, under some threat of danger. And so um, they tend to be, you know, they're just a little more outgoing, a little bit more adventurous. Whatnot. Um, some unusual features, you know, uh, it's, it's, it, it's well lit, uh, and the the lighting is a combination of uh, they've collected some of the glowing fungus and they've cultivated it into the walls. They've also caged uh, in like little wicker like baskets uh, fire beetles, uh, so they let out their glow. And you, you, so it's a a pretty warm light uh, that's you know flooding through, and it's it's not there's no real portions of that are dark look real quick the areas you're going to walk through are here i think if you're going over let me just look at what these are real quick. oh so these are um just confused myself greatly why did you give me all these different 12s well, there's only one okay um, so as you walk through this area, you can see pretty much everything you on the way in walk through the market, um, and you're not, you're going west now and you see all the, the area you're in is largely residential. 
And so as you're walking through this area, you see caves that sometimes go into the earth, sometimes go up. They branch into smaller caves and you can tell this is where the families live. Um, you guys move. Um, squeezing around, you move through this area. You eventually get over here. And let me tell you something about this. Um, <clears throat> this is the first building you've seen that might actually be original or close to original. Um, it is, uh, um, it is sized not to small people, like it is sized to medium. And, and based on a side, sign outside, you can see that this is, uh, it's a, a sign of a, a big mug of ale with a, a, a frothy head on it. And, uh, and your, uh, your little assistant friend, he says, uh, this, is, this is the foaming mug. Um, Tappy's just inside. Um, uh, he can set you up for the night. Um, no problem at all. Uh, I'm going to go back to the office and make sure they don't need me, but uh, you, know, you know how to find it. So um, if you need anything, just give a holler, I guess. And he sort of runs off as fast as he can. Um, and you are standing outside the um, the uh, the inn. Is it been passing through this market? Do we see any like armor? Hmm? Ar all, armor shops. Well, it, it, it's like a proper like all sorts of things market. Okay. So you saw, anything uh, in uh, in those stalls? Anything that seems like it could fit me? Or yep, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. As you walk through. Um, you're not in it now. Like that was as you walked to where um, uh, Dorbo and Seni were. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like it, it looks like it. It looks like a small village market up on the surface. Maybe I, a, a, a unusual food, but other than that, nothing. I think Vic, Vic will just make a mental note, maybe to return at a later time uh, once our business with uh, Tappy is done or whatever. He's got cool. some shopping he might want to do. Are you headed to the inn? Yeah, Drazzle's heading into the inn already. Suppose so, but it does look a little big, doesn't it, Jason? Well, I suppose we can make do for one night. There's a special kind of hell to be sleeping in an oversized bed in a city built just for you. I'm sure they have small beds, too. I sincerely hope I don't, so. don't mind stretching out on a large bed, though. Hmm. Floor is nice. Um, Drezzle, I'm assuming you are probably the first up the stairs into the place. Yeah. You walk into a room that it's, it's I, I, I don't remember what time I said it was. I, I think I said it was roughly midday when you guys got here. So it's, let's say, mid-afternoon at this point. So not a prime in time, right? Like, but there's a few deep knowns sitting at the table and there's a there's a big stone bar and behind the bar you just see this this deep gnome and uh they are just like slumped over the bar like just like this and they're they're wide awake but they're just sort of hanging there awake but like hung over or they're not like, like they're 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 Dramatically posed, but you don't know why. Like I, kinda, like, yeah, I can see the I can see the person behind the, the counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you can see them. They're they're just sort of. We, what food? Uh, yeah, uh, her his head whips up, and his eyes just widen like saucers, and a jaw drops. And he's like, thank God. And he, he runs out from the bar and he runs up to you and he's like, I'm Tappy. How can I help you? Please stay here. Food? What? I, anything you want. Please. This place is so boring. 
Thank you. Um, we will never leave. And, and he takes her, he takes her hand and he starts to lead you into like some back rooms to like, he's like, you can stay here. I have rooms. Oh, you have friends. Perfect. Yes. Um, and he's just leading you in. Team, I have found and solved the problem. Well, uh, before I go inside, I'm going to stop at the door and turn and sort of look around. And I am feeling more comfortable, but not entirely at ease. So I'm going to uh, take a good look around everything. Uh, all right, just make a quick perception check. Yeah, so this this is like, you have never felt this unobserved like in any big city on the surface. Um, you, like, it's, it's not like they don't care. It's like they're very confident about their security. And I don't see anything. I don't see a drow hiding in the shadows no. spying Ooh, on us. Like, <laughs> um, um, Jason, yeah, like you, Jason, no mind flares, right? <laughs> the last one we went to had a mind flare. You no see um, aggressive mind flares. You see no kids running around. You see no. Oh, I'm sorry. You see kids running around. I was thinking of breakfast though. Where you never saw that before. Um, kids playing in the street. Like you see, like you know, people doing their shopping or walking back from shopping. Like it is. It is. It, I. I think you just feel weird because of everything you just went through. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like they're naive. Like that's not. Because your experience on the outside was, oh, they are very serious about how they're defending this place. Yeah, um, it's it's just inside they choose to live a life that's happy and and relaxed, well, and they've they've now included you in that. With a with a heavy exhale and sort of weight lifting off of me for a moment, I'll turn and go inside. Good. Tappy is super excited to see you as well. Um, Vic, I think when you walk in and Tappy sees your instruments, it's like, oh, like this is my lucky week. Um, and uh, you have never seen someone more happy to see the group of you. When he sees Darendil, he's like, oh God, like he's like, oh, like, like this is what a bar should be. Uh, and he starts starts dragging you uh, into these living quarters and he, he he is very clear. Anything you want on him, right? You're the most exciting thing that has happened in months. You don't get um, many customers. I mean, uh, we do, but uh, not they're they look of one like one of three things. Like you guys are the most exciting thing that has come through those doors in years. That isn't a ooze or a drow or whatever you serve oozes in here no we don't serve oozes but we do oh, have a little okay. bit of a you know who knows what the heck I, is going on how long hmm. you've been open for, for business uh maybe eight years no one come no people come but it's just it's not normally it's you know oh my aunt's coming from you know my old home or um or it's like, oh, here's a Dwergar who will drink but won't say a word. Uh, you want people come. Vic makes sounds people like. Well, we sort sounds. of need, like, I, 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 if I, Vic, please make sounds all you want. Um, but, I mean, you're just going to get a bunch more people like me in here. And it's, it's okay. We're, we're a happy bunch, but, yeah, you know. So thank you for being here. So where is uh, this food? Um, I, you have to give me a minute. These these folks eat things that you probably aren't interested in. So just slither on that slab over there and I'll get something cooking for you in a few minutes. Um, is there anything else I can get you? Well, I would like a drink of your Signature beverage. You got it. Well, like you say, um, you know, 
a little boring around here, maybe a little music, just our presence, you know, is a little bit exciting in here. Maybe we could work out a little, little something, you know, I play some of my instruments for you. Um, you know, maybe give me a cut of, uh, the sales. Uh, absolutely. I will warn you. Um, it's probably easier to barter, um, because like pretty much everyone here is my cousin and I can't really charge them for anything. Like what they'll do is, oh, I'll go over to Grecklestow and bring you a, you know, a barrel of beer. Like that's oh. how things work around here. So, absolutely, any money that comes in, you can have a cut. But I just don't. I'm being honest with you. Just don't expect much. It's more like a, I don't know, like a, a give well, what you have, take what you can. Or hey, you know, when in Rome, you know, and in that case, maybe you got something kind of interesting to to give me for my troubles, uh, a little keepsake or a. Souvenir. Uh, uh, I will. I will definitely think of something. Um, you don't have to do anything until I think of something, but I'll. I'll. I'll try to. You know, no. use my nog- Use my noggin. Whatever you come up with would be fun. I don't know, Tappy. I feel like a society that does not use currency and where everyone treats each other as family is is quite a nice place. You should. Oh, you should count your blessings. It is fantastic. I'm not, I, I would rather live here than anywhere, but you know, a little bit of variety here and there that's not trying to kill me is, is, is mm. nice once in a while. I can see the, I can see the appeal. You have um, people who bring law and order to those who do not follow law order. Well, I, I'm sure you met the guards when you came in. We did. I mean, inside walls. There, there's guards here. I mean, and you saw guards sort of around, not not as intent as they were on the outside. Um, he probably does tell you, and I I have to look up the specific name. He probably does tell you. He's like, you know, in the back in the old days, we had a um um like a I don't know. It's almost like a knight up above. We had an order of people who kept order in the city, but now we mostly use the guards. And I'll give me a second to look up the name. Uh, but feel free to keep talking. Can't oh, quick, maybe maybe you can teach this, this Tappy how to maybe play an instrument or learn something new. Give some spice to it. Like. And our yeah. rooms are just down this way. Uh, you are, he has, I mean, if you have let him, he has successfully dragged you into the rooms. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he's like, he's he's persistent, but it, like not in a mean way. Like, just a, I'm going to be very contentedly like taking off my backpack and stowing all kinds of stuff that I don't feel I'm going to need for a little bit and like stretching out, not carrying all that extra stuff. Yeah. He, uh, he, the, the rooms are, they're nice. They're, I mean, they're, the beds are basically stone slabs. But they have pack pillows, like they, it's it's soft, um, it's it's uh, nice temperature, not too hot, not too cold. Um, those those uh, he talks about borough wardens who were in the old Plingdon Stone, who were a part of the city defense, and they they know it's it's a common feature of deep known villages as borough wardens. They're just not here. Like it hasn't been reestablished because it's sort of not really a city yet. So. I'm off armor and stuff, and I'll keep one dagger on me because I gotta. Yeah. But uh, I'll go back out and sit in the common room and put my feet up. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, there Victor, is a wash place. Yep. There is there is a, a place to wash. There is um, absolutely. And it, really, it's quite nice, and and. It's more obvious when you're on the inside that this this probably was damaged when the drought destroyed it, but the drought actually probably used this as some sort of base for a while, so it wasn't completely destroyed because it, it fits them, right? So uh, it's 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 it is before it before the city was destroyed. This structure was probably sitting around for 300 400 years, and so it, it has. Luxury, not like, like, you know, convenience. So, um, anything like so, uh, 
uh, Chesa, you are off to the uh, common room. Uh, yep. It uh, sounds like um, one of you is off to the the uh, like the baths. Vic and Adolfix, what are you up to? Um, I think Dolphix is very intrigued by this Swerf Neblin society and the Underdark. Um, he'd like to to explore the city. Just walk around a bit. Okay. Um, get a, a feel for his cultural cousins. Okay. Vic, are you taking the opportunity to join him, or? Um, uh, Vic is going to uh, spend some time there, just playing playing his instrument and, and whatnot. Uh, so I don't know if there's like a stage or just a corner of the tap room. He'll kind of yeah, set there's... up his dulcimer and start playing and uh, sing some songs of uh, tales that we've been on. Okay. So I think, I think there's probably a table there that like, if, if there were no furniture in the room, like you would be able to say, Oh, that's clearly was meant to be a stage. And uh, when you walk in with your dulcimer into the common room, um, it, it, uh, Tappy's eyes light up again, and he he goes over and he just starts like forcibly pushing this table out of the way so you can get on the stage. Like he he knows what it is, but he has no one coming through that that does this, so he's just repurposed the space. And he he's like uh, he he tries to like. He goes over to a customer and he's like, "Hey, that's the best chair we have. Like, let him have it." And he uh, he he switches chairs out. With <laughs> whoa, his customer. whoa, hey, Tappy. And, yeah. uh, he no, puts, no need for that. No, it's, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's my brother. Um, oh, well, and, in that uh, case. Uh, and he, he he brings it up for you to to sit in this chair, and then he probably runs behind the bar and finds a pillow to put on the chair. Like he's like every like like convenience he's trying to throw out you guys um all of you who are in the common room and even probably uh Dolphix, even before you leave he probably is just like hey here's a road dog and he puts a beer in your hands <laughs> and uh, uh so well tappy you play any instruments uh once you get up here with me he's like uh, you know i tap the spoons every now and then but that's about well, it don't do that that's well. perfect that's all right we'll do uh, a little number together come on the people want to see you play all right why don't we why don't we wait i'll practice this afternoon why don't we do it this evening when you know i got more of a crowd it's kind of a weird 3 30 p.m crowd oh yeah that that sounds good and i'll just kind of warm up here a little bit i gotta do some shopping anyway so i might so. uh head out so Dolphix, um, I would say that you, um, there's, I, I don't, uh, let me see, I'll run through some of these areas real quick for you. Uh, you see where I'm moving the arrow, right? Um, so, um, I, I would say Dolphix, as you walk around town, um, people are really, really interested in you. Not because you're not a deep gnome, but you're clearly a gnome, right? And so uh, people, I think probably the 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 common tongue here is under uh, under under common, and so they uh, they start with that, and then they and, and they don't switch to common; they switch to gnomish, and it's a you know it's a gnomish for you with an accent, and uh, it's it's. You, some of the words are different, but it's great, like totally intelligible and totally like fun to hear the the accent and the and how people uh, express things here. Um, more so than like Darendil that you saw with Darendil, uh, kids will run up to you. Like kids were interested in Darendil, but they wouldn't like run up to you, run up to him. And so uh, so yeah, kids run up to him. Uh, they'll kick balls to you. Like they they they're pretty, really like. You feel very accepted. Um, it's a uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm 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 soaking it in. You know, okay. playing playing little prestigitation magic with them. Okay. Yeah, like, they they totally love it. Yeah, I'm 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 just trying to experience. You know, their culture, get an idea of like what kind of people they are, and 
okay um, stuff like that yeah and and you you still none like none of you have really detected any like deception here like this is genuine like affection towards you guys and it's 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 refreshing and, and the right? and the general sentiment is still like you know these were people who came to resettle their home right. and right, right, right. Okay. these are these are uh, like in our world these are the u times right like yeah. these are the people who like really threw away their old lives to come here and do something that they knew was going to be different okay i'm not detecting any any underlying current of something strange there's not another no 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 uh, you're not going to have a parade with uh a giant teddy bear who turns out to be a demon or nope no nope, no no no, no. <laughs> um, th- it's not to say there's not without problems and i will like you as you and uh will we'll, i'll i'll give you one of those of them, um, um, as you get to let me see a good place i'm just assuming you're wondering yeah i'm just uh, wondering let me give you a good place that this would happen um, as you get to Actually, there's two places I'm going to bring you. Um, yeah. So, um, I lost my mouth. Okay. At some point, um, you you sort of wander back the area you know first, and you're up in this area here. And um, it, this is probably the the biggest like shift in attitude that you see, because as you move into this area, the what's that the eastern wall? Uh, the eastern wall is covered by this gigantic door similar to the ones you saw coming in that's wrapped in mithril bands and things like that and you see maybe eight guards here which is the most you've seen anywhere together inside the place Um, and they have uh, rock badgers with them on leashes and stuff like that and uh, um you uh, a gnome comes up to you and is like, "Ah, oh, um, we heard we had some visitors in town." And he sticks his hand out uh, and he says, uh, "My name's Sark, Sark Axe Barrel." And he puts his hand out to shake it. Pleasure, Sark. Uh-huh. I'm uh, I'm the captain of the guards here. You see, um, and there's some things you need to know. Uh, All ears. If you cause trouble, I'm going to have to take care of you. Rule number one. Rule number two, you got to listen to the guards. Because you're new here, and there's lots of stuff. It may seem nice, but if I told you what was behind that door, you'd probably, you know, run home right now. Ah, you'd be surprised. I've seen quite a bit in my lifetime. And, All right. Uh, well, I'm just going to tell you that there's a Medusa over there. Oh, heavens! Yeah, I lost like three guards just last week. Oh, uh, so do you need assistance or? Uh, I made mean, you know, If you have an army. Well, my maybe. companions and I are quite capable. Um, not quite an army, but we hold our own. Uh, well. You're just here today, so I'm not going to make you go fix my problems. But Whoa, for the jam, if man. you think you guys have a, a, a way to, to deal with it, we're not going to we're not going to complain about you helping us out. All right, I, I will bring this topic up with my companions. And- All right, but just realize, like, if there, you see a big door with, you know, that fancy metal, mm-hmm. that is I'm I'm talking way too much like pretty right now. And it's driving me bonkers. Uh, if you see, if you see uh, um, one of these big doors with the the metal bands, mm-hmm. you, it's best that you don't cross. Understood. Okay. Thank you for the warning. Oh yeah, of course. We're we're happy to have you. Just don't cause trouble. Remember rule number one. Yes, rule number one. And 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 captain, um, 
not to appear rude, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, clearly you are a, a capable force if you are so brave and organized in order to retake this wonderful city of yours. Um, how, how, how do you feel your, your, your men and women are in, in battle? Are they, do you think oh, this is a defensible position? Yeah, I mean, our, our, our general idea is that we, we, um, we clear an area and we expand it we try to get some of the miners in to and the forgers in to build a new one of these doors and then we seal that area off which is sometimes hard like but the, these my my crew they've uh, they've been with me a long time and I, I i'm pretty proud of what we've accomplished so far and, and the walls of the city the ones that we entered those are properly patrolled absolutely uh, most of our guards are over there uh, and then you'll see a couple of these doors around and then he stops himself because then for the first time you see suspicion on any of these faces. He's like, why are you so interested in the defense of the city? Oh, well, I, 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 I am quite impressed with what you have all done here. And, um, well, where I am from, I, I am actually quite well versed in, uh, tactical warfare and his combat history. And I would be willing to uh, lend my knowledge and expertise in uh, uh, helping you secure this home once more from threats, both inside and out, if, well, if you would allow me. I, I would I, be happy to help in any way. I appreciate that. I, my squad, they're more than capable, but of course, extra hands are good. Uh, and they said, but just remember rule number one. Don't cause trouble. Uh, and then he, uh, you, know, you know, someone calls him over and he sort of turns and he takes his leave of you. Uh, and I would say as you walk around, you do see a couple more of these doors. Can, what, like you guys could only see what's lit on the map, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. No, okay. So um, so there's, there's a couple more of these. Um, you see, I'll just move you guys up. Um, you see, there's stuff in between, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into what's in between. But you see a couple more of these doors. Uh, it, that's that's the one you came in. Am I being watched right now? No, 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 no. I mean, no. I mean, not watched by guards. Like, okay. I, unless unless you went into that specific door, they are watching that door, not you. Okay. Can I just go up? But there are like multiple like barred doors, right? Yeah, and and similar uh, as you sort of follow the path, mm -hmm. all of them have guards. Right. This one, for whatever reason, has the most. Okay. Okay. But besides, besides, no, actually, yeah, this one has the most that you see on in, uh, on the inside. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to just like go up to a door and like push my ear up against it or anything because there are guards there. And yeah, I would say no. Me. Like okay. yeah, like it, and I'm just, like, I'm gonna go. Just, yeah. I'm going back to Taffy's. All right. Yeah. The only the only other thing I'm gonna um, throw in here is you pass through this area, and it's actually, it's actually, like really cool. And like you're probably drawn there because you hear singing, and so at first you're like, "Is Vic out here?" Right. And then and so you you walk in that direction, and what you see is. Um, you see uh, inside the small, like it's a, it's a fully sealed cavern, right? And inside you see a group of stone standing, like standing stones in a circle. Uh, they're, not, they're not huge, they're slightly taller than you are, but they're in a circle. And, um, sorry, oh, no, sorry. I have the wrong area. Give me one there. Sorry. Where am I? Sorry. Wrong area. Put this. There they are. So no standing stones? No, there are. I just, I'm in the, I, oh, it's over here. Oh. It's up here. So, that's uh. oh, you see where I am? No. <laughs> so, um, so it's elevated and that's like, so you, you sort of walk up the stairs. And 
there's a bunch of, it's not standing stones, it's a bunch of rocks and crystals in the middle of the bowl shaped floor. And you see a, a woman and she's singing at the perfect harmony to make the crystals hum. Wow. And it's, it's beautiful. And in fact, there's like 13 children around just like in awe of what she's doing. And as you, as she changes her tone, another one will start humming. And it's clear that it's not her, like it, that it's the stone itself humming. Like she's following the stones. No, vice versa. The stones are following her. Oh, like she, the stones are, she, okay. Her voice is trained enough that she can choose which stone to amplify her that pitch. And oh. uh, it's, it's beautiful because it's really like stunning and something you've never seen before. Kids love it. Um, and you probably see some like her, she's totally, um, like she's totally welcoming. So kids will run up and try it themselves and she'll try to teach them a little bit about how to do cool. it. No one, no one's successful, but, um, and she, um, uh, she uh, sees you and she says, oh, she says, um, she says, uh, we have so few visitors. Um, my name is Gara. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you, Gara. My name is Dolphix. Um, I wandered over here because I, uh, it, your voice was just, I, I mistaken it for another angelic voice that I know quite well. Um, uh, it's, it's probably the crystals you heard, not so much me, but thank you. No, oh, yes. Um, um, would you care to explain what this is, this is quite fascinating. I, I have never seen such, such Ooh, stones like this. It's not, it's not magic or anything. It's just um, if you sing at the right level and she, uh, she points to like a pretty wide uh, piece of crystal that's, and she lets out a sort of deep register. And uh, it's really, she, the, the note she is singing is actually very, not of a high volume, hmm. but as as she continues the note you suddenly hear a much the same note louder reflected back from the crystal oh fascinating and she she says um so as long as you can like if you're skilled enough to control your song or your your, your pitch um it, it it'll, it'll do it for anyone oh fascinating. There's, well, there's not many of us left but I, I, I myself, uh, my my lungs are not what they used to. Uh, too much, too much bitter leaf in my younger years. But um, uh, if you would indulge me, perhaps I I have some manipulation of sound I can try. Of um, course, please. It just um, it's it's open. To, I I just come here in the afternoons to practice. And... All right. Um, so I, I think minor illusion lets me create a sound. I mm -hmm. used it before to try to cancel out a sound. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to mimic the same pitch you did with Basically, minor illusion. Okay, yeah, make me uh, make me an arcana check. Let's do that. Oh. Uh, yeah. So nice. It takes like you have to you have to vary it a little bit, right? Like you have to. Yeah, I'm like, like trying to find it, it, right? Yeah. But eventually you did. And she claps her hand delightedly. She's like, I've never seen anyone use magic to do this before. That's uh that's that's wonderful. She's not um uh, selfish or like like she doesn't like she's not just jealous or anything. Yeah, like yeah. she's like super excited that like other people can can use this. Um and you probably you probably know enough about the deep gnomes to know that this would be maybe not uh a formal religious experience, but this is very much a like communing with the earth experience. Okay. Like, the same reason we go out to go camping, right? Like, and mm -hmm. it's like, and so she she finds peace from it. So she's happy someone else can can do that too. Well, well, thank you for sharing this experience with me, Gar. Is of course it's all right. I, I have a companion who is uh, quite musically gifted, um, uh, and I'm sure that he would be overjoyed by experiencing something like this oh please I, it's it's really uh, normally there's no one here um the kids just came because i was uh i was doing my you know normal daily practice mm. well with a voice like yours it is no wonder um well uh, 
I mean, it was it was great to meet you. Um, and she uh, she just sort of sheepishly uh, wanders off. Oh, oh, and one one thing before you go, oh, you're yeah. you're not hearing voices or anything, are you? No. Great, um, excellent. I uh, mean, I hear your uh, voice. Yes. Uh, perfect. Outstanding. Great. You you have a, a wonderful day. Uh, I'm, Dolphix is basically like trying to experience everything, but he knows like usually there's something weird with all these cities. And mm -hmm. as much as he loves well, maybe this, maybe there's city, not here. Like, no, there's got to be something weird. Here. <laughs> um, and, but he's gonna go back and right. tell tell Vic what he saw and once the group regroup, so he'll tell. So I I think two things happen to the group back before you get back, like during that in that meantime. Sure. Um, the first is uh is that drazzle you go in to did you go in to take a bath or, or something yeah i went to take a bath okay. i felt i was road dirty and if i was going to meet important people okay you follow the directions of where um uh uh tappy told you the bathroom was and uh as you uh as you sort of turn the corner in there you hear a woman's voice being like, there's someone in here. She's saying like, she's like exclaiming that she's realized I'm in here or she's telling me she's in there. Like when you open the bathroom door and there's someone already in there, that sort of thing. Yes, I, I am here. Um, you, The bathtub is sort of around the corner. Uh, and so you just hear this voice and she says, oh, well, I." I'm sure I'll be finished soon enough. Only one tub? I, 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 I am a lady. I am a lizard. <laughs> and she, she just sounds really exasperated. What are you doing? I, I, I just kind of sit down where I am. Like, I will sit here and wait. OK. And you hear. You don't hear splashing or anything, but you do hear uh, her say, um, I was rushed, but I'm done. Ah, good. I, that, that's all you, that's the last thing you hear. I start walking towards the tub. There's no one there. Uh, Vic and, um, and Jasa, you see a fully formed ghost wandering the front door, go up to the bar, talk to Tappy, get a shot from Tappy. Tappy pours the shot. The ghost tries to pick up the shot. Doesn't it doesn't work, but doesn't doesn't matter. Pretends to drop drink the shot. And then it is like, see you tomorrow, Tappy, and wanders up. Well that ghost seemed okay. Do you think he's a happy drunk or an angry drunk? Seemed happy enough to me. I hope more of them are like that. You were thinking of shopping. It sounds like they work on barter here, so why don't you take the bag of holding with you? There's some weapons and armor in it you might be able to trade. Oh, well, yeah, I kind of forgot about all that. I was trying to figure out which of my instruments here I was going to barter off. There's a, a fair assortment of drow equipment that you could trade for something, I'm sure. Anything um, Anything you're looking for? Anything I should get grab on my way out? Uh, not that I can think of. I, I think I'm fairly well equipped at this point. A quiver of arrows. You can always use more. Oh, all right. I'll yeah. I'll keep an eye out for that. I'll I'll meet you all back here then. I'll, this shouldn't take too long. So as you sit. as you are sort of wandering out, Dolphix um, sort of is back at this point. Um, and I would say um, just because it's late in the day, like it's late. There's probably markets open, but um, you do see. Um, uh, so bad with names. You do see um, uh, Dorbo and Senny wandering over to you, wandering over to the inn as you um, 
are are starting to head out the door. Vic, do you still want to go, or do you want to? No, I'll I'll hold off. Uh, this is an urgent business, so if I see them, I'll okay. hang back. Right. So um, yeah, so they they see you as you're walking out the door, and they're like, "Oh, like, I, did you get a chance to explore the city?" We did, or at least I did. Oh. It's fa- fascinating place. You it's uh, it's small but growing. Um, we have our problems, but. Um, well, all in all, we're, we're pretty happy. Yes, yes. Um, um, we, I, I did run into your captain of the guard, mentioned that oh. you have a, a Medusa problem. Um, mm. I'm, I'm sure that uh, my companions and I would be more than willing to assist. Well, we very much appreciate that. We, we have, um, uh, and um, you see probably a differing attitudes between Dorbo and Sunny here. Where Dorbo is more of the like, oh, everything's all right. And Sunny's like, it jumps in quickly and is, is oh, actually, we have a number of problems. Um, like that, that is, that, um, she's a little bit more, I would say, tactical about it. She, that are preventing expansion of the city. And that, that is definitely one of them. Huh. Um, we, we can't move residents into a, um, a place where they might be turned into stone. Mm. Wow. Um, but please, we came for dinner. Um, yes, yes. Uh, and Tappy, uh, Tappy uh, is sort of getting a table together for the six of you. And uh, yep, so you all sit down. Um, I would say a little bit to give you a little bit of a data dump here. Um, they they talk a little bit about themselves and they talk a little bit about what got them here at this point. Um, so uh, Dorbo and Senny, they're married. They're both like uh, their last names are uh, digrammatic. And they um, they sort of jointly oversee the city. Uh, Dorbo is more the, the the industry of the city, so specifically mining gems, uh, the the few users of magic who can sort of infuse gems with magic. And um, Seni is more of the like families need homes like. We need to make sure we have food, that that sort of thing. So they split their time, sort of their their duties, pretty evenly down the um, down the middle. Um, they had planned for years to come back to Painted Stone, year, decades, and so what it was was a series of sort of missions into the city to see what it was like, and then slowly. Um, clearing out areas and slowly trying to build a base here until you get to what you see today. And so that was that that from when they first settled to now was a 10 year process. Still not huge, but they still have plans. And so um, they're very appreciative of the work that everyone has put in. Uh, and I would say they are also very, um, you like they don't, the gnomes who, who apply is not the right word, but the gnomes who want to come are not necessarily like, not just anyone can come live here. They really like have to be the right spirit of gnome that, that can do this. Um, you learn, I would say in the conversation to, I, I'm not gonna hide it in the conversation, like uh, I'm happy to have dialogue, but I'm not gonna hide it in the dialogue. Um, two problems you hear um, to um, from Dorbo's side you hear this problem of um, there are oozes like and you saw a little bit of this as you're walking in the city there are oozes and weird like things that um, are like problems in the city 
uh, occasionally they squeeze through cracks and they're there. Uh, and I think I'll look this up the direction, but I think they think like it, it, I think they think it's centered around the area northwest of the city, um, outside of the city itself, but to the northwest. I, I'll relook up that in a minute. From Seti's side, she talks about the problem of the ghosts. Uh, the ghosts still think the houses are theirs. And so she is having trouble figuring out how to have enough residences for new families when you also have this issue of these ghosts who fought to defend the city still living in those houses. Um, and she's like, you could more so like with uh, Dorbo, he's like, it's super easy black and white question, right? We don't want ooses in this city. With her though, it's this really like, you can tell she's the more diplomatic of the two. And it's really, really like this fine line of like, like, what do we do? Like these, like, we survived because of these people, um, even if the city didn't. How do we honor them at the same time? Help the city from them. So, um, so that's from their side. They are fascinated with everything that's happened to you. And I would say this, like um, you, as you guys start talking more and more about what's happening to you, you notice that the servings and the beer come more and more frequently, not so much to get you drunk or anything, but you can tell that Tappy wants to hear it too. Like everything you're talking about, he's like, like, oh, like, can I get that played out from you? Like he's just nearly ever present as much as he can to try to absorb as much of the information. So what, what, what parts of your story are you telling them? And um, I'll remind you, you told quite a bit to the guards outside. Like, I don't think you helped really anything, but. Well, I don't think we told anything to the guards, did we? We just told oh, them. Oh, about the we drama, sorry. To... Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, you were, you were, yeah, you were really, really open about the trial. I mean, Vic hasn't had a captive audience for anything he's said in a long, long time, so he's going to ham it up here. He's kind of loving the attention that we're getting from Tappy and everything, so I don't think he's going to... He might even embellish many parts of the story as if they need embellish it. Um, and I think that uh, I've, I've let a lot of my guard down as we're here, but if the... Uh, if at any point it feels like there's details that, it, like, I just want to sort of rely on my insight. If it seems like there, things you shouldn't say, basically. Yeah. If yeah. it seems like there's anything that might that that shouldn't be said, I might try to cut Vic off. Okay. Or I'll leave out that sort of thing. But right, um, hit the knoll like that, right? But if my insight doesn't seem to be triggered, like if none of it seems like they're receiving it in a sketchy way, then I'll just let Vic go. Well, sorry, uh, Trezel, what did you say? I was always saying the things that Ed's talking about, like we should stop Vic if he says Trezel ate a knoll arm once. He got really sick. We should leave those right. kind of pieces out of it. No, no if, if, that's if probably happening. To tell the story that uh, that Drazzle, makes Drazzle look stupid, we'll allow it. Um, <laughs> yeah, with I all mean, this, like uh, all these uh, drinks uh, coming to the table, it's yeah. probably recreating. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I am pretty sto sure that the story of Drazzle eating slime has come up like eight times in this conversation. The, lick the floor. As they talked about their problem did I, with Did I tell you about slimes. licking the floor? That was Yais's fault. She said it would taste good. I did uh, not. So, um, uh, But that will lead to me telling Tappy all about those fish balls and see if he can make them. Okay. So Jason, like, you don't get that feeling. The, the, for all of your insights combined, you you get the feeling that they're actually really, they're excellent listeners. And you can tell it's, they're not hiding what their thoughts are. The, the idea is that they have been so concerned with keeping the city safe that they haven't had the opportunity, like even, even the Neverlet Grove had better explorers than this place does, right? This place has hunkered down and guarded its little area. 
um, and not it has travelers come through it and so it's highly reliant on travelers to explain what increasing dangers might be out there in the underdark and so you you hear them um and once again we've we've talked as players and we've talked as characters and there's a difference between like you don't necessarily know that was difficult right but and you don't know it was Zet Gamoy, like but you know a lot about them right like about these creatures that you experienced to to uh explain what's going on and um Particularly, I would say, as you start describing like the infection of the the myconoids, like things like that, they're really like they're you can tell they're taking it in, and they're taking in like can could we become mad? How would we detect that? Like how would we like you can see them often giving each other sort of knowing glances back and forth, but all you none of it seems sketchy. All of it seems like they. It, like their fundamental goal in life is to keep this place safe. And it, I think for all of you, you like, it's not, maybe the never like, particularly Basidia, the idea of like keeping a community safe, but certainly not Grecklestone, and certainly not Slivadoke, right? Those are all like everyone's in it for themselves places. Certainly Drow society is a little similar too. So, um, yeah, like it, it, everything, everything, even their questions back to you just come off like very natural and not like with a hidden motive. Um, so yeah, they, they, it's a, it's a good conversation. It's good food. It's, um, Tappy, um, I think Tappy a couple times, uh, points out to, um, Dorbo and, uh, See, I already remember. I want to say her name is Senna. I don't know if it is. Uh, Senny. Senny. Uh, so, so Dorbo and Senny, um, even they, um, Tappy is like, do you know he's a singer? Like, he, I, I heard him playing already today. Like, maybe we can have a concert or something in the city. Like, Tappy is sort of trying to play off you guys. Um, yeah. Is there anything particular you guys want to bring up? Is there anything? Vic, Vic's like downing his like fifth beer at this point. It's been just fuel for the story. And he says, so you got these two problems. You got the oozes. You got the ghosts. Those are manageable problems, you know. But uh, this two-headed demon that we saw out on the dark lake and um this fungus lady those, those are things we can't figure out uh alone we we need your we need your help we need your help with that and we got friends out there that are in danger and i don't know do you got do you have like friends you got some allies we could like call together some kind of council and like get everyone together and like we'll figure this out hey this is probably the first time you see them like maybe a little bit uncomfortable they look at each other and they're like well uh, like those problems seem really big like we like we have big problems too you know there's there's were rats or something trying to take over the city um and, rats. And, and there's there's i mean there's only so much we can do just you know there's there's 200 300 of us here what like you're talking about 40 foot high demons what are we gonna do well i i don't know maybe uh maybe you got uh are you, are you friends do you do you know the myconoids maybe there's more myconoids that we can call together to help us out um, well, I mean, and, and they're, I don't know, they, they, I think now you have really worried them, right? And so, like, you have seen that look on their face of, like, they, they, when they've talked about oozes and they've talked about ghosts, they, you know, you can see the, the frustration on their face, but now it's worry. And they're like, I, I like, 
if we keep trying to solve every problem, this none of us are going to be safe. Like we start with the problems that are here and then we move to bigger, like we grow our city and then our city is more prepared to deal with these problems. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I dampened the mood. We don't need to talk about this right now. This is a good time. This is a nice time. Maybe we have a couple of songs. How does that sound? We have put you at ease. Oh, we would love it. And, and yeah. <laughs> I think... I think you turn like you like turn towards the you don't even get up you turn towards the stage and Tappy is hand, like holding your instrument like right there like <laughs> like a foot away from you like uh, and he's like that would be a great idea and he shoves it in your hands. Thanks, Tappy. Um, so, so tune it up a little bit and kind of look out and see if. I've got the attention. I got Tappy there, and just uh, so sorry. It, it is also filled up. Like now that it's actually like after sort of workish hours, it's 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 most of the seats are filled. And certainly now that it's spread around town, that there's visitors in town. There's, there's definitely people who uh, who are interested. So, so Vic will um, tune it up a little bit and okay. speak it singing, and he's. I love to spend time among the deep gnomes where they treat me nice and fill up my bowl. Don't need a king or queen or here we're all royalty. Blinged in stone, my home away from home. Here, here. Get, like, they're, uh, they're, they're not dwarf rowdy bunch, but they're a rowdy bunch. Like, they're, they're excited that, you know, someone's made a song about Blinged in Stone and they're, they're happy and they're drinking and, and Tappy's like, like giving you a wink, like as you as you keep singing and is excited. Uh, the other three of you have um, Dorbo and Senny. Is there anything you guys wanted to bring up? I uh, I just uh, I think this you know. is the first time in months that uh, Jasa isn't hyper vigilant, mm -hmm. and I think I fall asleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like in the middle of everything, all of the noise and rowdiness and drinking and songs, and I just fall asleep. Okay. Oh, I think uh, Vic has expressed the group's concern about the demons coming. So okay. that, that was his and, concern. And yeah, and they're certainly not like I don't, I don't want you to think that, I, like I don't, like I've tried not to project a community that's like head in the sand like that's not it they just recognize that there's a lot like, of other things they have on their plate right like there's more immediate concerns and they're they're of course their the ultimate goal is everyone's safety but they there's but right, you have to start at the more problems things. right and then our ultimate goal too was was this city has a way up to the surface right or they know one right which you have not asked about okay um yeah can i approach that topic then uh, all right, so this is probably the most serious, and Dorbo is now a few beers in, just sort of like he was probably matching Vic. And Dorbo um, says, well, you know, we, 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 we may have some trouble with that because I, I, I don't really have anyone I can spare to, to show you the way up. Oh, that's quite all right. If, if you have a some way we could I, I'm quite good now at drawing or transcribing maps so uh, if you have something like that we could use and he 100% shifts slams his hand on the table it says absolutely not and sort of gets up abruptly knocks the chair off and walks away and Senny looks very embarrassed and she's like I, I, I'm sorry that's 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 not something we're prepared to do quite yet. Um, I hope you uh, let's let's talk in the morning. I'll I'll, I'll come back and I'll um, let let me deal with him for now. Um, and she uh, she very apologetic, and she she walks off. I, I lean over to the rest of the guys and just go. I think I found it. <laughs> 
Well, I think uh, at some point Vic's gonna have a little bit of an intermission, and maybe it's like right at the point where you know, like he he went to get another beer from the bar and like runs into her, and is like, you, you know what? You go. I I've been I've been thinking a lot about it. I don't say this lightly, but I, we're gonna take care of all your problems. You don't worry about a thing. I got we got this. We're, we're gonna the oozes the the the, the ghost thing. We, you know they just they just need something to pass on. We'll. Uh, Dr- Dolphix is really good. He he will know what to do. He'll fix it. You don't have to worry. I'm sorry about worrying you about all that stuff, but we- we're really good. We've been through all sorts. Uh, you don't worry about a thing. Um, so uh, she's like, um, I think she sort of is like, like doesn't want to dismiss you, but also like, like is looking over her shoulder at her husband leaving. And she's like, um, let's. Uh, I'll be back in the morning. I promise. Let's 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 yeah. talk this over then. In the morning, and, you know, there was a little bit of a lycanthrope thing that was like thrown in there. I didn't quite catch uh, yeah, all that, but they, I'm sure we are, can fix that too. They, trust me, it's not as simple as you think. Um, I, uh, you sing beautifully. Um, I I look forward to as long as you're here, um, hearing more of your performances. So thank you. And she uh, she says good night. And Vic feels really good that he did like a really good thing there. And... <laughs> um, and he's gonna go over by Dolphix and ask him what he knows about ghosts. Um, I I would say uh, Drazzle, you you are probably like seeing if there's more food, so you're yeah. like behind the bar or something. I'm just rooting around food, drink. I don't know when this we're gonna get another time like this. And so Tappy Tappy heard most of the, the general conversation. At least he knew the topics were being discussed. And and he says to you, um, because he's not really sure how to communicate with you yet, I think. Is he says to you, he's like, So those were rats, yeah, like. Some people don't mind them. Some people want them killed. They're were rats. They are rats and what? Rats and, and like like me. So you became a you people become I'm not rats. a rat. Like you, it's like it's like you. You're half person, half wizard. But I always it's like half me, half rat. I always lizard man. Is this always rat you? I mean, I, I don't know how it works. Sometimes they like look you, like you. You, you fall in love with a rat. rat, and then suddenly, like you kiss them, and I, I really don't know. Let's. Is it like at night it is rat, but daytime it is man I, over I, in the corner? I, I don't. I don't. I've never met one of these. I mean, if I do, if I have, I don't know. God, really how do you know they person. real? Uh, I'm trying to move off this. Uh, oops, sorry, what you say, Dress? I was like, how you know they real? Never met. Oh, they're real. You will see them. Uh, as clear as you can see my hand. And he puts his hand in front of your face for an unknown reason. Hey, you be careful. He'll eat that. No, he, he, I think he uses it as an excuse to like touch you. Uh, and figure out what, like, if you're real. <laughs> you think is ghost lizard? Uh, we we don't have one of those yet. I, at least I haven't seen one. So, um, the a couple of the kids were asking me about you earlier. Yes, they wanted to know if you could crawl on the ceiling. Crawl on ceiling. Yeah, like a lizard. No, a man with this man shape of lizard. Was your mom like a woman and your dad was a lizard? How'd that no. work? We all lizard people. Lizard people, woman, lizard people, man. Huh. And you it's can tell he, you can tell he's coming up with new questions to ask, but he doesn't want to ask you right now. 
<laughs> he, there are there are some some things he's curious about. I still want to know why you guys have sex with with where with rats. Who said anything about sex with rats? How you I make don't know any of them. Anyway, then he hands you a bowl of food. And it's just, it's just like, it's like the bottom of the stew bowl. So it's not like, it, 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 it is the bottom, it literally is the stew bowl and there's food burnt into the bottom. He's like, I, you'll love this. And he throws some salt on it. So, yeah. All right. So unless there's anything else you want to accomplish for the night, we'll say that is the end of this night. And uh, we can take a break here for, is that okay? Maybe 10 minutes or so. Sure. And uh, we will be back and we can start exploring this city and it's possibly many problems. So uh, thanks everyone for staying tuned. Uh, we will see you in just a little bit. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, we are gonna roll right into the next day. So I assume all of you are pretty much healed, but make sure you have long rested. Uh, feel free to prepare spells as needed. What is your plan for today? The only thing you know is that uh, Senny said she would stop by this morning to talk. You know, Vicky wanted to go to the market. Well, at this point, uh, Vic doesn't really remember too much about the previous evening, and so he's just kind of hung over in the the common area when we're coming together. But um, it's dawned on him. Uh, Jason gave him this bag of holding. Um, he's gonna rifle through that uh, to see what what kinds of armor and. St- those types of things we've picked up. Um, so it, it is on the quartermaster sheet. Uh, we picked up four drow short swords, four drow studded leather armors, and four hand crossbows. Okay. So how bags of holding work, of course, is if you don't know it's there, you have to convert the whole thing, right? Are you doing that? Yeah. Okay. So you see everything on the quarter sheet plus some new things because I didn't hear anyone talk about doing that when you first found it. So mm-hmm. give me a second. I think it's two scrolls. Um, well, it was never looked for anything. Right? Uh, two spell scrolls remove curse and spider fly. Oh. 40 days of rations and 320 gold also fall out of the bag that are not on the quarter master sheet. And then there's a pile of drow armor. And I think if there's any um, Svernipian near you, they all like are like curious. Like, they're not scared because they think maybe you killed the people who was, were wearing this. But they're also like, why would you have that? Uh, just, um, you know, we're, we we got a little side business here. We do a little haggling and um, yeah, these are our wares, you see. As I watch this, uh, I reach my hand into my bag and attempt to pull something out of it as well to show that Wrong. we have bags with things. So you feel something soft and furry at the bottom? Do you pull it out? Yes. Roll me a 1d8. Uh, we're also a zoo. So I think you, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's the same number you always roll. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Uh, I think it should just be canon that this bag of holding only oh, produces yeah. one type of thing. Yeah. Uh, what is it called again? It's not a bag of tricks. Gray right? bag is of it? tricks. Uh, it, it's slightly modified, but it's yeah. not. Gray bag of tri- tricks. Broke. Oh, no. 
it's it's even worth a panther just appears uh and sort of like you see it like it like it's a ball of fur as it throws out and then it lands on the ground and you see it squatting in its tail like it is very agitated in the middle of a inn. okay wolf i is bad hair day but you're fine you, you you were smart enough to know it's not a wolf I just think it's the same wolf, but it's some reason it looks like a panther. I don't know that they're different creatures. I, I think you know they're different creatures. Like it's not like you're Pollyanna of the yeah, the, ba- the bag people. animal. Dressed as a panther now. Um, in a town full of ghosts. It's all spirits. Uh, yeah. So there's a panther now prowling around, and people are terrified. In fact, I think I think Tappy probably says, like, this is probably the hook into how you learned how Blinkenstone was destroyed. And the story basically goes that when Dritz left with the Displacer Beast, he came here from Renza Branson, and he hid here. And then the city chose to reveal itself. It was sort of like a off, out of the way, uh, deep down village. They chose to reveal themselves. And that is why the drow attacked them. So the fact that there is a panther-like thing is like, yeah, like that's probably not the smartest thing to, to like be parading through the streets. Drazzle, how do we get rid of it? Um, Panther, back, back in bag. Uh, it, it's still around. Is there, maybe we could put it in a room or something for now. Um, Tappy says, uh, you know, you, you've been back there. There's no one staying here except you. Uh, feel free to hide it. Just, we don't need to cause any extra worry. Good kitty. Um, I look to try and make a little leash type thing that I can use for it. Okay. And then what? Like, come Which I feel is always the question I'm asking girls. Like, like a little bridle and harness for it. Okay. And, and, and what exactly are you going to do with this now? Toss it over its head. Harness. And what? Just try to toss it over its head like it's leashed. We're right. We're right. Keep going through more steps. Where, I, where are you putting the panther? Well, I, I let it still walk with me, but now it's got a leash on it, so people will be less. So you're, you're so you are taking it out into the town. It right? appears domesticated. I don't, mm, I don't know if that leash I, I system maybe, you got set up there is really inspiring. A maybe a whole lot we of just confidence. Take it back into a room uh, where it can uh, not be visible for a bit. I don't. I think they'd get crazy when left alone. You think this best? Well, we're frightening all of the people who have been so kind to us. I point to the leash. Does the leash help? I don't think so. I and I said, come, kitty, and I walk back towards the room we were staying at to tuck it in. All right. Vic's uh, picking up all this stuff off the ground, putting it back in the bag of holding but then when he comes across the the scrolls uh he'll look at i don't know jason maybe is the one or um not uh sorry dolfix is the the one that he's maybe thinking of as he picks it up he says i don't remember these uh is this yours did we get this last night i i don't remember anything well perhaps they were in there when we found it i'm I, Vic, I apologize. I fell asleep during your song. Oh, that's okay. I, I don't remember 
I don't. I did a song, huh? It's yeah. it's not that it wasn't wonderful. Perhaps because it was wonderful. I. Dolphix, do you remember anything about last night? What? Oh. While you were playing, I I, I had a discussion with uh, our our lovely leaders of this the city. Um, and I, I asked about if they could assist us with finding uh, a pathway to the surface. As you recall, that was oh, our main yes. objective. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, well, let's just say uh, Dobo was uh, less than pleased to hear of this. It seems like something is afoot that is preventing our escape. Oh, well, what was, did, did he have any indication as to what the problem was? No, but his mood shifted quite mercurially. Um, quite to the point where, well, we've all seen something like this before. I admit I, I hoped in my deepest of hearts that whatever occurrence is happening in the Sunderdark had not yet affected this city, but I fear there's probably something simmering beneath the surface. Well, it well, that's could be as simple good. as could be as simple as they're concerned about their well-being. If uh, if they're spread thin as it is, perhaps, perhaps. Maybe I, I, if we uh, solve some of their issues, they uh, might be more comfortable. Hmm. Yes, perhaps so. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Vic. Did, were you showing me something? I, I brought up oh. something completely different. Then I'll just hand you the the scrolls. The the scroll of I don't know what they are, but start to climb and remove curse. Yes. Um, would would Dolphix be able to tell that? Yeah, I think uh, yeah. maybe is remove curse in the wizard. I think it's just a cleric, right? I think it's just a cleric. I I, I, uh, spider pond devil, uh, and I, I would I would have absolutely no problem with Dolphix copying that. Um, so. Oh yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna copy. I'm just identifying it for everyone. Yeah, remove Dolphix. curse is in the wizard list. Okay, so it's awesome. yeah, yeah. yeah, I just explained to Vic what they are. <laughs> Yeah, remove, remove curses curse. level three, spider climb level two, I think. So, um, it come yeah. in handy. It's too bad we didn't have the spider climb last night. Those kids wanted to see Drazzle on the ceiling. We could have made that happen. Mm. Too bad we didn't have to remove curse a couple weeks ago. Oh, like all I'm the time. Surprised if uh, that necessity presents itself again. Yeah, very true. Well. Um, would you guys like to wait for Senny, or would you like to head out to the markets right now? Have I caught back up to them from the dropping off my panther? Yeah, or we're talking 100 feet. At most. Uh, and the panther, like the panther sort of crawls up on one of the top bunks, and you see it sort of like its tail wagging or flitting agitatedly. But other than that, it, it obeys commands, so it'll stay there. Then I mentioned just to the rest of them, like, did you hear about the were rat? Were rats? Yeah. No, but that tracks with that tracks with what we heard about Topsy and Turvy, and might explain their not wanting to return here. I think they have them here. No one see them. Darendel's story of uh, Topsy and Turvy were were rats and they came from here and did not want to return. So that seems connected. Uh, Darren Dill says, yeah, like he, he, he agrees with you. He says everything. Like, that's what they must have been. 
Um, he doesn't know. I don't think he knows the part about not wanting to return here. But, well, I, I told them. But... Yeah, um, certainly what he saw. So. Well, um, we don't really have a set time here that we're going to meet with Senny, so I, I think I'm going to take this stuff and head out to the market. Uh, if you all oh. think you might hang back here and wait for her? I'll go with you. I, I haven't visited, had a look around yet. I visited enough of the city yesterday. I can hang back and wait for Senny. It's easy oh, enough to, like, I'm, I don't mean to pin you in one location by an in non-specific uh, time of meeting, but it's easy enough to even on your way there, just stop by the where you saw the two of them and just see and check for the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I don't want to, that, um, I don't want to. Why, why don't we all just go to the market? We'll just party. stick together. Yeah, sounds good. Drazzle, you cool with that? You want to come with yeah. us? I go market. Hmm. So you, you guys had walked through the market earlier um and um you see um and probably the most interesting thing was that like similar to the area when you were just approaching the uh the neverlit grove when it just got so like um so intense with mushroom growth um, you can tell that at some point this place where the market is was the exact same way. And the reason you can tell that is because they're all still here, but they've been turned to stone somehow. It's not clear how. Uh, and so um, parts of these mushrooms have had to be chipped away so they can have this area. Um, but still up on the walls and things like that, there's these petrified mushrooms just everywhere um and uh, as i described uh there are makeshift stalls and there's pretty much anything you can think of being sold here um the only the only there are some topside wares being sold but particular perishables like you can't find like like beef like that sort of thing so it's, it's still normally like uh stuff you need with the underdark but it's all fresh, lots of mushrooms as proteins, things like that, uh, equipment and whatnot. I want to try to find a merchant that might be willing to give us a little something or barter for these drow, this Good. equipment. Is there, is there any sweet specific you're looking for to get? Yeah, um, I'm kind of looking to pick up a shield and um, like maybe like a chain shirt or... Okay. Okay. Uh, is any are any of the other of you trying to find anything in the market? Uh, no, not specifically. Okay. Nope. So, um, as you're wandering around, sort of looking at like who might be best and things like that, you see, you really do see like a rich assortment. You see fish from the dark lake, uh, which you were told not to eat, so you're wondering what that's all about, but. You see fish from the dark lake. You see, um, you see, uh, iron goods from Cracklestow, things like that. Like it's all abundant mushrooms. As you're doing that, you suddenly hear a deep clang. Oh, sorry. Let me undo the map. yourselves yeah. Um, yeah. so uh you hear like bells suddenly clang around you and you um you see the deep gnomes around you um there's merchants and everyone and some of them have weapons on them they draw short swords all of them start running away um, and you see guards, the merchants sort of run away. You see guards run up, uh, just a few of them, 
who happen to be nearby. And you see um, a, one of the guards in front of you, he stumbles back uh, and like, like he was hit by something, his hands in the air, sword there. And then you see him rise up in the air. Uh, and um, you immediately see around him, not like on them, but just slightly ahead of him, a strange shimmer in the air. And you are very aware that he has been enveloped by a gelatinous cube. So I need everyone's rolls. Oh my. Uh, we don't have tokens, so that won't yeah. come up. Oh, yeah, time. sorry. Uh, give me one second. I will put those on the map for you. I still have the big city map. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm just going to use that. There, we're not going to. Gelatinous cube is super easy to. <clears throat> you say that. You can make it easy, probably can make it super complicated. Uh, okay, so there's. You guys can see it now, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so you can roll initiative, and then I will put. And for those who are counting, players have four rerolls, and the DM has four rerolls. Okay. Hold this shit for him. Really? Is he that slow? <laughs> wow. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen that. I, I don't think I have either. Uh, it's such a like a perfect pairing to dress. Um, okay, Dolphix. So there is a guard inside this thing. Yep, I'm gonna leap over there and try to stab the cube with a booming blade. Okay. Um, here we go. Uh, that hits. So that's 10 piercing plus, uh, I think, 1d8. Okay. So that's two. Two thunder. So, uh, 12 total, right? Mm hmm. And I'm going to hit it again. Okay. Uh, you slice through it, and you see part of it, uh, you know, the. The gelatin sort of slough off. Definitely hits. Thirteen. You, you, you slice some some more of it off. Uh, Jason. Uh, are we uh, doing this more or less theater of the mind? So not Correct, so much yep. where tokens are. Yep. Okay. I am. I'm going letting to... you move into its range as you do. Uh, I'm going to move. Uh, and duck behind uh, Drazzle to okay. do a hide check yep. as a bonus action. Uh, and then uh, jump out and attack it with my whip uh, at from 10 feet away. Okay. Uh, it's for 22 points of damage. Okay. And then I will move back a little bit. Okay. Oop, oop. I just do that. Uh, Vic. Um, Vic's just going to call out to it. You worthless piece of slime. You ignorant, disgusting blob. You're nothing but an unstable, short chain molecule. And I'm going to cast <laughs> Vicious Mockery at him. Okay. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this gelatinous cube was like, I have self aware. <laughs> um, That's all I got. <laughs> uh, and he looks at you with a slightly, you know, chopped off cube form. Anything else, Rick? Um, I don't know. I guess I'll I'll give a point 
I'll give a inspiration to Jason. Uh, Trask, what is you? You said there's a guard inside of it. Yes. Does it seem like the guard is already dead? Nope. Okay. I mean, the guard is not moving, but the guard, it looks like the flesh of the guard is slowly being eaten away. I am just looking at what I could do for hitting, but no one's been hit yet. Sorry, that was the wrong spell. Uh, I was looking at that one. I was thinking if I could do um, healing word on the guy that's inside. Keep in mind that prayer of healing takes 10 minutes to cast. Yeah, that's why I hit the wrong one. <laughs> so healing word, does the person have to be able to hear you? It just says, see, so you can see within range. OK, then yep, yeah, go for it. OK. OK, so you have healed him for nine points of damage. Uh, he's still stuck inside, of course, but some of the wounds on his flesh start to uh cure up so that was my bonus action and then i'm just going to chuck one of those spears i have at it uh you know that you can do in this case you can do a second spell just as long as it's catch up right i was worried about what i would do that would also affect oh that's fine that's fine i just wanted to i i wanted to I was, I was a lot of people are confused by the two sp spell rule. That's I just didn't make like told the dead. I don't know what it does. If the Go guy's on. inside of it. Can I target the cube and not the man inside? I just healed. No. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, there's no like unless it's an area effect that doesn't affect others. Okay, and I'll told the dead on it. Okay. And it is missing some hit points already, yes? Nope, so it takes four points. Okay. Um, so the only person next to it, if I'm remembering, is is uh, Dolphix, right? No one else? That's correct. Got up next to him. Uh, so does it eighteen hit? Does not. Okay. So it's a it's pseudopod. Like you see, like it's a cube shape, but you see this like arm form out of it, and try to smack you clumsily. Uh, it doesn't do a good job. Uh, Dolphix, it is your turn. Uh, right. You you guys all see the um, the flesh of the guy inside being peeled away. Oh no. Oh no. Um. Hmm. <laughs> he doesn't have much time left, does he? You're not. Uh, I'm gonna You're probably keep... not. Probably I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep hacking. Okay. Eleven. Ooh, it's probably a miss. Um I would say Dolphix, you're close enough to that you see uh Oh no. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, that hits. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, okay. It's nine. So that's nine plus six. So 15 damage on the first hit. And 13 damage on the second. So um, there oh. is, in addition, in addition to the door here, there is actually a rock, like, and this probably would have come up. They, like in places, they've intentionally collapsed the rock when they couldn't do a door, and so there's an intentional rock collapse, and you see one of these oozes come to a second ooze. There's another one. It's a second cube-shaped one. Yep. Uh, okay. No one inside of it. Uh, 
slightly better initiative, but only slightly. Uh, so the second one hits. Uh, sorry. Okay. So this one you've you've chopped down into uh, like pretty minimal space, uh, Dolphix, and you've been trying to avoid cutting into the guard. Uh, so at this point, maybe like one, like you know, the guard's arms is actually outside of the cube, like hanging just there. Uh, mm. And it's it's fairly lifeless at this point. Like, oh, no. conscious lifeless, but lifeless. So, um, Jason, what are you up to? All right. What I'd like to do is try to uh, use my whip to wrap around that arm that is out and try to pull him out of it. Uh, let me, so I'm going to need two things, I think. The first, okay. let me see, uh, just do me a general weapon attack and we're going to say a 10 hits. So like, okay, so you definitely, you definitely are able to wrap the thing around and then, um, I need you to make a DC 12 stroke check to start yanking. You can have an advantage right. on it since it's barely any cube left. All right, perfect. So you you managed to pop them out um, here like a like that, you know, the the jello vacuum sound, like as he as he pops out and he uh, unceremoniously lands at the ground. Uh, I'm going to use my movement to pull him away then. Uh, okay. So, so just 10 feet drag away. Him. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, he is no longer adjacent and you're slightly farther away. Uh, Vic, sub next, unless you have everything to suggest. And I'll, I'll yell that he needs healing. Vic, what do you have to do? You have a weak electrochemical bond. I have seen some disgusting crud in my time, but you take the cake. Okay, uh, the original one or the new one? Uh, what's that? The original or the new one? Who is? Oh, which oh, oh. Uh, the the one that's right here near us. The one okay. that Jace is pulling the uh, the guard out from. Uh, oh. it, uh, yeah, it takes the psychic damage. Uh, Whatever nonsense then... you're spewing at him, it's working. But what else oh. happens? <laughs> and I'm going to throw a, a healing word at uh, the guard. Okay. Vicious mockery gives it disadvantage on its next attack. Got it. Thank you. Electrochemical bond. Uh, ah. Okay. So you see the guard sort of, <laughs> his eyes start to flutter, and some of the wounds on his acid wounds start to. To heal up on the surface of his skin, uh, Drazzle. Uh, so he got one guy out. There's nobody in the other one, correct? Correct. All right. So then there's no need to worry about this. I'm going to drop a flaming sphere into the mix. And those, Next to I, which one? Uh, I couldn't tell. Where, I only see one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the other one is just. Just at the very edge of our yeah, lane. He's yeah. up here. I mean, I don't know how far apart they really are, so I'm just going after the one that's already weakened. Okay. Yeah, and they're maybe 15 feet away from each other. They're not a very far. So, okay. Uh, drop a flaming sphere. Dexterity uh, saving throw on the gelatinous cube. Yep, fails. Nice zero. Uh, this one pops out. Um, it loses its consistency completely, and there's just like a Flow of ooze. Drag out your flaming sphere. Where did I put it? Okay, uh, I'll find it in a minute. Um, okay, so your flaming sphere is about 13 feet away from the other one right now. Um, it is that one's turn. It has 15 feet of movement. 
So I'm going to say, I went, Jason, I'm going to say I can get up to you. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, just how people are positioned. I'm just going to try to use the pseudopod on you. Uh, 20. No, it will succeed. So you're going to take 11 acid damage. So you are adjacent to it. Uh, don't think what are you up to? We're going to go up and try to hit it. Definitely hits. 14 plus 3. Okay. And the second one. It's 13. Okay. Uh, you slice pieces off of it, corners off of the cube. Uh, Jason, it's your turn. All right. Well, I'm going to attack it with the whip while I'm here. Okay. It's. And deal 14 damage and then disengage as a bonus action and move away. You get sneak, right? I do get sneak attack because Zolfix is next to it. Yeah, so 22. Nope, just 14. Oh, sorry. I can't. I just can't. Yeah, sneak attack was already on it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Vic. Vic's going to pull out his rapier. And can I charge forward and get within melee of it? Yep, absolutely. No problem. And take a swing. Uh, hits. Sorry. And with my bonus action, I'll attack with uh, dagger. Okay. Hits. And this would be, let's see. I know something. If I'm understanding how this works, two, two points, because I don't have the modifier on there. Correct. Yeah, yeah. If it's in parentheses, it means it was rolled. And then, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, Drizzle. I'm going to slam the thing into it. Okay, so you can move it 15 feet, right? Oh no, never mind. It's close enough. Yep. So I gotta roll damage again. Yep. And then I'm just gonna roll dex, right? It's gonna, yeah, it's, I'm just gonna roll the 2d6 because there's nothing to it. Yep. Definitely fails. So eight. Okay. Six eight points. And then as an action, I'm just going to. Uh, Toll on it. Okay. You, I think, uh, you guys here around you, you hear like um, a little bit of awe. Sorry, I only meant to roll the first one. You hear a little bit of awe as some of the guards are like, like appreciating your skills. Uh, it is its turn. I think now. It's Vic and Dolphix who are around it. So odd Vic, even Dolphix, Dolphix, um, Miss. Uh, yeah, I should have done something else, but okay, Dolphix, it's your turn. It's uh, okay, 10 points. Uh, five. Oh, 15. Yeah. Okay. Still up. It's looking like a well cut diamond at this point. Uh, uh, and you managed to, with that second strike, to basically burst it finally. And it just sort of ends in a puzzle of ooze, like a, on the ground. Um, you see uh, the, um, the sort of Swerf Neblin, who was trapped inside, he he stands up and he's like, "Huh, thank, um, I'd try thank. to help him up if I can." Yeah, he's he's like he's panting, but he's he's really really happy. You guys saved him, um, and he uh, um, he says, "Thank you, um, Dolphix." You noticed that while there wasn't a person inside. Of the second one, you do see uh, the second one a little bit of gold and uh, a short sword that has mysteriously not been affected by the use of acid. 
uh, has fallen out of that second piece. Uh, I will go and reach for it. Okay, so it's 12 gold if you want to add that, wherever you guys want to add that. And then uh, a short sword that seems to be of drowish construction, but very well made and uh, possibly magical by everything you know. What kind of sword, sorry? Short sword. Sorry. Well, uh, um, the, you... the, uh, the, the drow guard, whose name is Mev Lintmapper, old Mev is like, these things just won't stop coming through these cracks. Like, we can only produce so many of those doors as, you know, as fast as we can. And even if it's sometimes they can sneak under those. Always cube? All sorts. Anything that can squeeze through the cracks. Thank you. I, I I owe you my life. Well, I'm glad we were here. I, I, I'll put in a good word for you guys. I Thanks. I It really means a lot to me. And you see him like, he's still barely hurt. Um, but he's like not, not life-threatening or anything but there's uh, acid burns all across the skin and stuff. So he starts sort of uh, schlepping off to... Uh, well, to... you can buy us a drink at Tappy's later. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to. I'll buy you all the drinks at Tappy's. Isn't the prices are free? reasonable. Yes, that was the joke. Um, so, uh, and so slowly as like things settle, like I think you guys are also a little amazed by this is like all the gnomes left right like the, the merchants particularly uh and the guards were left behind you all um they come back pretty quickly like and and you get the feeling that it's the regularity of the event um imparts some sort of resilience to the group so they know to get away and they know the guards are going to take care of it and you guys took care of it faster than normal and so then they they come back and continue business not necessarily like nothing happened but pretty close to that like they're used to this yes very well accustomed to this. so uh, so uh alex you are absolutely able to to trade stuff uh gold piece for gold piece okay so so the stuff you need um, and they're they're really really happy to help you. Um, you probably also can even trade. Uh, you, there's probably on sale for um, for healing potions, which is so. If you have 200 gold of equipment, they'll take it. Do you need some help doing the calculations? Probably. It so, I sounds can look like quick. Uh, studded leather is 45 gold each, and we've got four of those. Okay. Uh, so that's 180. We've got four short swords and four hand crossbows. So we've got a fair amount of coin in that yeah. stuff. And what you're just trying to get a shield, and what else were you trying to get out of this? A uh, shield and a chain shirt. Okay. So chain shirt is probably going to be the most expensive. I think it's 50 gold. Okay. So short so... swords are 10 gold a piece. The hand crossbows are 75 gold each. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. So uh, keep keep one hand crossbow and then trade the rest out for weight. So four healing potions and then chain shirt. Does that seem like a fair trade? And shield. Yeah, and shield. Yeah. So that, like, just without doing it like, going into the past. And it, it sounds like you've got uh, a sheet that we're tracking this on. Uh, I put it all on the quartermaster sheet, so I'll just I'll take it off of there. So just leave one hand crossbow of the stuff you already had, and uh, I guess each of you take a healing potion. If that's how you're going to split it. That sounds reasonable. Uh, is there anyone in the market who could help us identify this short sword? Um, yeah, probably maybe not in the market, but you can definitely find someone who can. 
um, and and maybe even Mev helps you. Like that's that's Mev's pay payback for you, is you don't have to pay for that service. It is a short sword plus one of drow construction, and the merchant who identifies that for you is very very quick to point out what of drow construction means. And Jason, I think he points at much of the stuff you're wearing. Mm -hmm. he says well, what that, I'm wearing was drow originally, and the Durgar took it apart and turned it into two. Oh, suits. got it. Okay, I forgot that. Yes. So anyone who's wearing drow stuff, he, he also indicates that it will fall apart the minute you get to the surface. Okay. All right, it'll be an hour or so before it disintegrates. But for now, you have it. So it's short sword plus one. And this is one of the weird, like, magic items don't dissolve, except they do sometimes. So if they're, if they're drow. <laughs> yeah. And you bring them to the surface. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you have a short sword plus one uh, for whoever might need it. Uh, I would happily take that if no one else wants it. No need. But Go for it. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just remember that it's drow. It's... I put a note on it. Okay. Um, I might, uh, having that explained to me, um, look into uh, acquiring a suit of studded leather that is not drow make. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can just pay like the the you stuff that came from Grackle Stone. They definitely have. It. So um, uh, if you want to trade the hand crossbow for that. Um, well, I'd have to. I would trade the drow make uh, oh, armor I'm, sorry. I'm wearing. I would trade my and yeah. and my yeah. other armor. You can absolutely pay gold too. Sorry, I didn't like. It was just in tappies that. Oh, that's no. I I'd prefer to trade because I don't okay. want to carry yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. If it's so if I, it's roughly the the gold value, I don't need to negotiate. I'm going to trade my drow make studded leather and my regular leather armor for one okay. suit of non drow make studded. Leather. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else you guys want to do in, while you're shopped? Anything particular that you're, you're looking for? Um, if not, I think we'll go back to Senna, Sunny. Um, and so, Sunny, um, as you're um, actually, you know what? I want to do a few more things of things you see it for now. Before we go back to seven, so um, I'm going to move this arrow. So this is that collapsed area where the ooze's actually went through, mm -hmm. and this is one of uh, one of those mithril doors. Um, uh, give me a second. Um, this over here is actually the way you came into the city in the first place. So just to, to the west of where you are right now. And then I think, I think probably the biggest one I want to show you, which you would have walked through on the way here. Um, and you probably would have felt a little uncomfortable walking through is down here. Um, this is um, this is the Stoneheart Enclave. They have um, retaken this area of the city, and it, it was a temple. Like it was clearly a temple. Uh, the temple was dedicated to Sejo. Sedjo John Earthcaller, the Spur of Neblin God of the Deep Earth and Nature. Um, and so there's some acolytes sort of like trying to restore the temple. And I think you felt just uncomfortable because it seemed like it should be more holy, sort of more sequestered from the rest of the city, but it's actually smack in the middle of the city. So people are walking through it and it just for you guys I think. Maybe you feel a little uncomfortable while you're just walking through it. Um, I need all four of you to make perception checks. 
Okay, so um, you um, there's there's some uh, statuary around, uh, a lot of which has been destroyed. Um, one of which you see a an acolyte um, restoring, and as you stare at it it gives you the most familiar and the most like comforting feeling, but you don't know why. Like you can't place why you would have any connection to this statue. Mm -hmm. hmm. A quick, if you ask, a quick, it, it's of this God. Okay. Like, or, or a representation. Like it's not. Uh, but other than that, you don't like it, it seems like a distant memory of some kind, but you just don't, you're not. And it's not, um, it's not complete. It, 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 it's, it's, it's the best of the statues around, but yeah, like it definitely isn't in prime shape anymore. So you have a general like visage and you get general shape of the body, but other than that, you don't. Okay. Um, all right. So you head back to to Senna, Senny, sorry. And uh, by the time you get back, she is uh, she's sitting there, and a bunch of her like assistants, like she's basically taking the office to the bar, uh, and she's sitting there. And as she sees you uh, come in, uh, she politely asks her uh, her assistants uh, to go back to the office. And she uh, stands and she, she welcomes you all. And she says, please, um, I, I'm, I'm so sorry for what happened last night. Um, I hope you can forgive us. Um, these are just really, really um, times that are more stressful than I think you know. Well, you won't need to apologize to all of us. A few of us have no memory of anything untoward. Uh, uh, Tappy is good to make sure that happens. Um, and she, uh, she sort of gestures the chairs around you. Um, Apologize if you were waiting, we ran into a bit of excitement. Oh, no, no, it's, it's easy enough to, uh, I was able to get my work done. Um, but I did hear about the help you gave the guards. Um, it is much appreciated, uh, particularly uh, Mev uh, saving his life. Um, that is, uh, fortunately, a constant hazard for guards here. Um, and that's, that's maybe, maybe something I wanted to talk to you about. Um, well, we're not the sort to let someone die if it's in our power to prevent it. Um, Dorbo, he's not, he's not crazy. He's not, um, that's not him. Um, you have to understand that people have taken advantage of our hospitality. In fact, this whole city fell because of the hospitality we offered. And he's very aware of that. And perhaps if you could help us a little, it would be a better time to ask him for favors of the, the sort you're asking. Um, we truly can't spare a guide to take you. And he is so suspicious of handing over a map of our city and the defenses and the area around it. Please, please understand. It is nothing personal. It is just a, a precaution that we take these days. You, um, you you have offered to already to um, to help us any way you can and I would um, ask if that's still possible would you still be willing well you're helping us out just by letting us be here 
Um, and we, we, of course, and, and by all my power, you will be safe while you're here. Well, you know, I, I don't remember a lot about last night, but I do remember the bits about it seems like you got a lot on your plate, a lot of problems. So uh, point us in a direction. Let us know, you know no, how we can be of service. There's there's so many problems in the city, and I can't really, I, and I'm not the only one who will, who will have them. So um, well, I, perhaps, I, I think... Oh, go ahead. Perhaps a first step might be to see if we uh, can't do something about these oozes. Yeah, Dorbo, no joke about that. Um, and once again, I'm going to say to the northwest, just so I don't have to find the actual direction of the text, but to the northwest of the city, we we feel like they generally come in that direction. We don't know why. Um, the guards don't, the sentries don't go in that area because of how dangerous it is, dangerous it is. Um, but if there's anything you could do to figure out what might be happening up there, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, similarly, um, <laughs> the were rat problem. Um, there seems to be a group of were rats. They, we know them as the Gold Whisker Clan. And they seem intent on trying to take back our city for their own. Hmm. Um, were rats want to take over the city? I think they want us out of it. Although I'm not, it's not clear to me because they. I think very much though, enjoy the safety that we give them. If we were, it, if we left, it would be us versus the Uzi, or them, they versus the Uzi, um, which I don't think would be helpful to them. I don't think they're in cahoots. They probably, but I, I don't know what, why they, why they, attack why mm -hmm. they they infiltrate our area um and but i do know that we would very much like them gone so we could use their area we need we need more space we can't be confined here and do you know where they come from i do and she tells you a direction and i check okay. i'm gonna look it up it's like so don't, don't, I'm sorry That's um fine. uh um, and I think the other thing she says is, she says, I know my husband and your, anything you can do, even if it's not these, like where rats are oozes, it, it's going to increase his, his comfort in doing the favors you pass. I know that is so much to ask. You have traveled so far. But I know also that my husband won't yield on this one thing. Like he, he sees what you asked specifically as a very dangerous key to the city. It's not unreasonable. If we were to fall to the drow who hunt us, then they would be in possession of the map. So I can see why you wouldn't want it to be in anyone's hands. I thank you. I, I, um, and she, um, yeah, I think she says, um, I, I am absolutely at your service, like whatever I can do. And I will, even, even with Mev, I will encourage Mev to go talk to my husband to talk to him about what you what you did today and how you saved him. Uh, well, I'm feeling pretty good about dealing with slimes. I mean, we just did that, but uh, yeah. the lycanthrope thing, I don't know so much about them. Uh, if they're anything like what I understand from tales where I'm from, um, they're pretty tough customers and silver seems to be a important thing i don't have any of that i also what's wondering magic? doesn't that work what's a leg and throat is leg in the throat you can't breathe 
Well, um, it's kind of sort of like a curse, I guess, Drazzle. Um, it's sort of a transformation. So some leg gets in throat, and what happened next? Well, a leg gets in someone's throat, likely another lichen throat, and then they pass that on. It's a fancy word for a were-rat. Ah. Um, so Sunny, Sunny says, um, like, um, she points out that the area the were-rats control right now uh, includes the house center. Oops, let me see if I can explain what that is real quick. Um, so uh, the house center is one of like, was formerly one of the like center areas of the city. So the were rats have, have sort of taken over that portion of the town. And the gnomes trying to parlay with them have always been met with violence. Um, and so they, they're not really sure what to do. They're strong enough that if they made a full advance, they'd lose, it would be unacceptable losses in their mind. Like they would lose too many guards. And so they're trying to find any way to, so they've installed traps to like, if the were rats sneak in, they'll be caught in the traps, things like that. Uh, but they're not really sure what. Um, Seni, you can tell, You can tell this is one of the areas where Dorbo and Seni have a disagreement, just based on like she's very respectful of her husband's opinions, which is that they need to be driven out. But you do hear her insert in a couple times that these are descendants of our people, right? Like these are deep known were rats, which means that they deserve some. Uh, sympathy, I guess, for the best one. Do you think that there's any chance that a peace could be brokered? Hey, and she, she sighs. She says, we, I, I have tried. And she says, every time I've gone there, or not she, she's never gone there, but every time we've sent anyone there is under the violence. So I don't, I don't know. I, but she's hopeful. Cautiously optimistic, probably the best way to describe it. We believe there's a chance that we've met two were rats from here. They were amongst the prisoners that we were captured with. You know, I never, Corey never considered that. Um, give me one second to just look something up real quick. Um, would you use the names? Um, yeah, I mean, if we talk about it, I'm sure I would mention them. I wouldn't yeah. hold them back. I mean, I, we'll put it this way. If, if these two, if they would, if Topsy and Turvey came from Blankenstone and these two are the founders of the, of the reestablishment of it, mm -hmm. they must know them. Yeah. So if that if that's gonna make you hesitate using their names, that's... no, I I would use it, and I would say that they had. At first, I only knew them as deep gnomes, but they did not want to return here, and we later learned that they may have been were rats. So she um, maybe. she sighs, and I'm assuming the night before you sort of told them the whole story about what Darren Bell's version of the story, so. Like she, you see a lot of conflicted emotions and she says, I, I, I didn't know any of that. Like I didn't know there were were rats. They lived here in town. And one day they just left. And we were so worried about them. We sent sentries out thinking maybe they had gone to the mines and, and gotten captured along the way. Um, so you see like real, real like empathy about what happened to them. Mm. And then you see the dawning on her face that 
But if they were were rats living here, does that mean others are were rats living here? You start to see those like gears turning in her head. I suppose. Are there were rats here in the city? Were rat not always rat. Sometimes, like yeah. you. We yeah, had no idea you, they were were rats. Yeah, and you never, you before. neither of you ever saw topsy or turvy in any were rat form. I, I guess my assumption, and it's just a guess, but that maybe that they became infected and they left to protect the city. And that's why they didn't want to return. Damn, she, she said, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I don't keep secrets from, from Dorbo, but I think I will not share this with him. Um, I don't need to make him paranoid about his own things right now. I'll, I'll watch it. Well, I suppose you could give all of the residents a silver ring and see if they wear yeah. it. Uh, perhaps I shall do that. It's within our power. Uh, you don't need to tell them why. No, no, not at all. I, although those who refuse, I think it'll be hard to, to figure out what to do next. When um, we pass the temple, is there a, a priest who can lift curses? I, I, I don't know if he has that specific skill, but um, there is a priest and a qualified one there. If, if we were to find a way, we could perchance try to lift the curse from them, and then they would be members of your community. That's absolutely. If they would go through, uh, we would we would gladly embrace them back if they were no longer cursed with with whatever has happened to them. It might take time. I, I... So, uh, so she says, she says, um, the, the head of the, it's called the Ruby and the Rut, is the temple. Uh, she says, the, the head of the Ruby of the Rough, um, his name is uh, Glyphic Shroomlight. Which is the most awesome D and D name ever? <laughs> so, Glyphic Stormlight. Um, perhaps, perhaps you could talk to him. Uh, but. Seems reasonable. So, she, um, she sort of, I would say, at a certain point, excuses herself. Like you've given her, you've given her a lot of different emotions in terms of like being heroes earlier, or being excited to try to help her, not only with her city, but also convince her husband that you're, you're, you're the good sort. And then there's this little bit of worry about the wear out problem. Um, but she's, she is on the side of the wear rats. They have to be like brought into the fold somehow. So it's the better of the two people to deliver that information to. Um, and I think at a certain point she takes her leave, and that's actually probably where we will leave it because we have so many like ways you can now go, and really like you only know ten percent of it. So like really a lot of ways to go. Um, so we will leave it here for tonight, unless anyone wants to do anything last minute. Um, you sort of know the lay of the land, and now we can. Uh, I guess we'll be back in three weeks, so we can we can decide what to do from there. So uh, thank you everyone for watching tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't checked out our Discord channel, please do so immediately. A lot of fun. Um, we are uh, up all hours of the night, no matter where you live in the world. So uh, please uh, join in the festivities. Um, we will be back. Uh, tomorrow night right is it candlecape tomorrow yep okay 
Uh, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's uh, community campaign. Yep, Lost City tomorrow. Oh, so uh, our community campaign, Lost City, uh, in one of the last few episodes of Lost City. Saturday night is um, is uh, Kingmaker with DM Dave. Uh, Sunday is uh, I think it's Salt Marsh Week. It's Salt Marsh Week. Yes, it's Salt Marsh Week. And Saturday then we... morning we have Candle Keep. Saturday morning. Oh, do we? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. So Saturday morning, Candle Keep. Sunday or Saturday night, uh, Kingmaker, and then Sunday evening is Salt. Uh, and our whole week starts over again. Uh, we unfortunately will be, I, I'm just traveling, uh, so I won't be able to be play the next two weeks, uh, but we'll be back in three weeks and then we'll have a, a nice long stretch uh, for five, six weeks in a row. So thank you everyone. Uh, please, uh, um, if you like what you saw tonight, please support our Patreon. With that, we will say good night. So we'll Thanks, see you soon. Thanks, Corey. Have a good night. Thank you.